Peace everybody, my name is Marcus D and uh, today I'm going to be going over how I made the beat for Don't Hold Your Breath featuring Funky DL. The beat was originally made around 2009, probably 2010 I'd say. Um, at the time I think I had just gotten back from the first Eternal Soul New Jabez tribute um, after he passed away. That was the first time that I've been to Japan, and then after that, 2011, um, I went back with Substantial um, on the More Bark, Less Biting tour, which also had um, K Murdoch and Mega Ran. So um, I think in that time I was in my second year of college at Seattle U. So Don't Hold Your Breath uh, was the first single off of Melancholy Hopeful, which dropped in 2012. Um, there's a lot of artists featured on there, including Substantial, Funky DL, um, Star, Pismo, One Below, A1, lots of people, Shingo 2, of course. Um, so that was really the first project that I got my bearings with and started to kind of get a name for myself. Um, so at the time I was still going to school and I was making beats in between classes, going back and forth. Um, I had like a little tiny keyboard set up with Fruity Loops. So um, I'm, without further ado, I'm gonna get into how I made the beat. Uh, it's not too complex, but uh, yeah, stick around and show you guys how I made the beat for Don't Hold Your Breath featuring Funky DL. All right, so um, of course, if you know anything about um, me and my career, then you know that I've used Fruity Loops since I was about 15, 16 years old. Um, started, I think, around FL5, maybe. Um, you know, same story as a lot of people. I had a cracked version of it, um, and my friends at school needed beats and I played piano so I was like I could probably figure out how to make beats um, and my brother had I think like acid pro when he was in college and he'd been messing around with some samples and stuff so I got into it and never looked back so Fruity Loops actually um, after this album I sent this I sent Melancholy Hopeful to Image Line and I told them that all the songs were made on Fruity Loops exclusively and they sponsored me and made me a power user or whatever and I got lifetime updates and plugins and VSTs and stuff from them um, so shout out to Image Line Fruity Loops is still the only program I use that and Adobe Audition Cool Edit Pro so you know the sample All that good stuff. So also this is the unmixed version because this session I think is from, I need, actually I need to check when this session was made. Uh, yeah, 11, 28, 2010. So November, 2010. So, pretty simple, the drum break. Uh, I did kind of chop this up a lot though. So this is the drum break. So to get the hi-hats and everything, um, outside of the original loop, I reinforced the hi-hats with the break. So. So I've kind of taken out the kick drum from that, and then I use the kick, like I reinforce the kick with synthetic kicks. And let me see what kick this is. Yep, Alk Alk Kick Zero One Eight, Alk Kick Zero Two Four. <laughs> Shout out Alchemist and everybody who had the CD 
drum kits off eBay from back then. Um, so I remember when I found the sample, um, I hadn't even started making the beat, but as soon as I heard the sample, I knew that I wanted to make a beat with DL featuring on it. So basically I tailored it kind of around his style and his flow. And once I sent it to him, which I connected with him in 2010 at the tribute, um, and we had kind of been talking back and forth, um, I sent the beat to him and he loved it. And I think he only took like a week, week and a half to write and record the whole thing. As soon as he finished it, he sent me the lyrics via email. And he was like, yo, this is, you know, like this track's crazy already. Um, here's the lyrics for it. So this is pretty crazy. I actually found the original email that DL sent me with the lyrics. And I think maybe like a day later, he sent a, a rough reference. And I was like, you know, my whole year was made. Um, so after that, he sent the files, finished the track, and then I hit up Vitamin D, um, who's, if you don't know Vitamin D, he's done a ton of stuff. He's mixed um, a bunch of my projects. He's mixed a bunch of huge projects. Um, one of the best mixing engineers, if not the best that I've ever worked with, definitely. So I hit Vitamin D up. I basically wanted to see how it was mixed with the sound with the project and if he could do kind of what I was going for. Um, at that time, I was very much trying to emulate a lot of what Nusha Buzz was doing um, around 2010, 2011. So, um, yeah, I brought in the track and I showed it to Vitamin D and he said, you know, he asked me if I had any references that um, I was interested in, you know, kind of the sound I was going for. And I remember I, I showed him, I think it was a uh, Hikari, which Substantial is on, which, you know, super dope track. But um, I remember when he listened to it, the mix, he was like, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing it like that. Um, you know, because a lot of people know the mixes on Nujibaz's stuff, the vocals are extremely low, um, the sample's really high, things are just kind of, you know, he, he mixed it in a certain way. So um, at that time, you know, I, I've, I've been around hip hop a long time, I've been listening to it since I was a kid, but that was kind of the style I was going for. And I probably would have gone with that style um, if Vita hadn't told me that we weren't doing it like that. Um, so I think he pulled up like some Pete Rock and CL Smooth and uh, maybe some Mad Lib and um, kind of, you know, got his ears warmed up and everything. Um, and after, I think the session took probably, it took like four or five hours. Um, it was at the OK Hotel down in Pioneer Square, um, the pharmacy memories um but yeah we ended up taking the day doing the full track um and when it was done like it came out so good that um you know i was just like can you mix the rest of the album and uh yeah from there we ended up doing the entire album and everything just came out amazing so um shout out to vitamin d um, definitely stopped me from possibly, you know, falling into a, like a pitfall of trying to copy your inspirations as opposed to just using them as an influence and then trying to build on top of that, um, which is important, you know. Um, but I'm happy how this song came out, and Don't Hold Your Breath is definitely one of my favorite tracks on the album. I think that it's a favorite. Um, a fan favorite and just overall you know I know DL loves it still talks to me about it we still talk about it so I use the snare from the break
and then the brake itself. Yeah, so that's pretty pretty simple for the drums. Um, I reinforce just the kick, and then the sample chops. So the mix sounds terrible, obviously, because it's not. I mean, this is, I think, like a rough version of when I exported it to mix it, but... Everything is like completely clipping and just, just terrible. But the vibe was nice, so most of the time that's all you really need. You can figure out the mixing and all that good stuff later. So another kind of funny little anecdote that I remember from the session for Don't Hold Your Breath. Um, like I said, it was the first time that I was mixing with Vitamin D. And I remember when he was listening to like the sample, um, he asked me if I recorded it from like a tape or something. And I was like, no, it's from vinyl. And he's like, it sounds like the like the tape head's dirty or something. Uh, it keeps like clicking and stuff, and I couldn't hear it at all. I had no idea. Um, but Buddy didn't hear like anything. So when I went back and listened to it, and he kind of pointed it out to me. I started to hear it, and it's like artifacts, right? So in Fruity Loops, when you use the Fruity Slicer, I don't know if it's still like that, because I stopped using it because of this, but. When you use the Fruity Slicer back in the day, um, when it transitions between chops, you get like a little click, like an artifact, when it switches from chop one to chop two or chop one to chop five. Anytime it switches between chops, you get artifacts in it. So you can hear those. And I remember him telling me that uh, Big Crit had the same thing. So he was like, you use Fruity Loops, huh? I was like, yeah, I do. Um, so he explained to me, you know, like, what it sounded like and I finally by the end of the session I could hear it and it started to bother like the hell out of me so I went back and got rid of a lot of them in other tracks that one we'd already mixed though um, so I didn't know how to get rid of it either at that time but I figured out like a you know a fix for it but you can hear it but if you just hold the chop Right there. So it's it's subtle, but it gets pretty annoying after a while when you when you hear it over and over again. Um, people might not have ever heard it, um, but it's in there. And I kind of switched everything after Melancholy Hopeful to get rid of that. But just kind of you know, fun fact about the process of the, of the making the beat. And this is actually the demo. This is the first reference track that DL sent me. Yeah, so my <laughs> my kick and my drums didn't hit at all. So then listen to the mix after Vida did it. And I mean, of course, after mastering too. So it's not going to sound like this straight out of the mix, but the mastering, you know, enhances and increases the volume of the mix, amplifies it. So this is yeah, not 
touching, not touching the volume at all. Don't hold your breath. 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 Way more low, I want like my physical sub. I'm sick and tired of these rappers and these lyrical sub. They about to get crushed and just like a cigarette box. It's lights out, so there's nothing at the end of the tunnel. Right, just hear the bottle counts with zip overs. We rendered it humble, so why they shouting on the mic? It's like they made. So, one of the parts that I forgot that was pretty important in making Don't Hold Your Breath um, is the bass line. And there's a technique that I use that I learned from Pete Rock and CL Smooth tracks, well basically just Pete Rock. Um, technique that he uses a lot is filtering out the sample and using just the low end. So it works really well um, when you want to go for something that sounds more organic. Um, I didn't want to add like a sub bass um, and you know have it be hitting in like crazy frequencies. Um, I, I really just wanted to keep it sounding soulful and organic and pretty natural, like which is why I use the drum break too. Um, and I really just only reinforce the kick, so you could have more, you know, thump to it. But um, basically, you just put a low pass on the sample, and then I lined it up with the other part of the sample, so that way you get the the original part of the sample. But then you also get just the low end of the sample. So basically whatever's playing in the bass is gonna be played at the same time. And you can also filter out like part of the bass or like the lower mid low um, in the original sample. That way you don't get too muddy. But it um, sounds like this. So that was pretty important in um, giving it that low end without it sounding too digital, keeping it soulful. So um, good technique if you want to use it. Pete Rock definitely uses it a lot in his stuff. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else about Don't Hold Your Breath that was involved in the making of it, but uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. I think the the process around making the actual song was more impactful than the actual making of the beat. I knew that like once I made the beat, I knew it was you know I knew it was something special. But DL is really what brought it to being what it is. Um, it takes you know 50-50 to make a song that's gonna last like this one has. Um, so huge shout out to Funky DL, uh, it's my brother man, and you know, thank you for making this track, this beat, so dope. Um, and yeah, thank you all for listening to it for this long. I think it's been 12 years now since Melancholy Hopeful came out. So uh, thank you all for listening. Thanks for watching. This is the first real, like, you know, recent beat making video I've done, so I'm gonna do more like this. If you guys want to see more, let me know, and also leave a comment on uh, what you wanna see. Just put that below. Subscribe, um, I got a Patreon, Bandcamp, there's always ways to support if you want. Um, but thank you for all listening and continuing to support what I do. Um, I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. It only really matters when the deal is on the table And even then they ain't your friend, they probably gonna rape you They take you to a foreign place, the planet of the ape you They leave you there a couple years, you feeling like they hate you And when you start to shout, they say, come on, it's only day two So I do it like there's no time left And don't listen to empty promises while holding my breath If you think that me and Marcus D taking a rest to settle for less, forget it Don't hold your breath and Don't be trying to step to us like you've seen success And one of the best, forget it Don't hold your breath as a student, even the rhymes I wrote on the desk Poetically blessed, so haters don't hold your breath Yo, just like a broke man owing a debt You wanna collect, I'm saying don't hold your breath